Uh, I'm going to keep some of the judges on still, so I'll ask you to, to, to please stay where you are because I see our speaker, next speaker isn't here yet. Um, Jonathan, you've also seen some of the um, uh, talks from the from the previous couple of days, uh, and you might have something to say about that. Also, the perspective of South Korea we mentioned um, yesterday. Your comments, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, all the startups that I've seen are all pretty cool. You know, I think just the ones that have joined the previous, uh, the Flight 8, for example, they're all going to be really good because uh, Axel and his team has vetted them. And so, of course, I, I, I was expecting already to see some decent startups. And, you know, I was I was impressed. Um, this last one uh, was really cool because, you know, it's kind of more into, you know, robotics. And that's more one of the sexy kind of, you know, industries mm -hmm. to, to kind of look at. Um, it really kind of got my attention when he when he said that they had uh, been the first Nepalese a company to ever export any electronics to the U.S. I thought that was really cool, especially as an American. And I think I think he said Texas, which is also where I'm from. So that really got my interest. Um, we have I just like so that you know, I, I'm also from Texas originally, and Alisa working okay. in the back is also from Texas. So there was a big Texan whoop uh, when he said All that. All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to get a Texas call together sometime. <laughs> But, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I, I've really enjoyed all the uh, the pitches. Um, I think Axel and, and, and again, the whole team um, has done a great job at coaching these guys, mentoring them, helping them with their business model. Uh, I can tell that they've been, you know, you can see that they've had some support and that, you know, there's some people who have given them lots of advice. Um, so, yeah, okay. that's great. Great. Thanks for that. Uh, and I'll pass then the, the virtual floor on to Matis. Matis has been around uh, with Oxo working on s similar projects for the last four or five years. I also know he's been in South Korea. Uh, Matis, your thoughts on what you've seen today and also just the World Innovations Forum in general and what they're trying to achieve? Well, it's um, amazing to see how the event uh, developed just from an idea on that Axel had and uh, was throwing around and how people caught it up and how it was uh, how it grew uh, during the last uh, years uh, as an event but also as a community and I very much like to emphasize the community behind because the World Innovation Forums has helped so many uh, startups with little or bigger things and as Jen Jonathan uh, pointed out the um, you can see clearly see the the progress that happens uh, regardless whether the startup gets somehow being part of an accelerator program or uh, being somehow funded later but but just being part of the community just by um, getting to know about some do's and don'ts some standards some connections to the ecosystem a favor here and there to see how how many things evolve and to see that Nepal isn't actually just a charity case but becoming a big business case uh, mm -hmm. when you look at a uh, party that, that is it's amazing to see when when I when Axel started in Nepal I was like to Axel now you're overdoing and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're of course I reinforcing mean, Axel's message he loves it when he t when you tell him that he, he can't do this it's impossible it's, yeah. it's there's no way so that's exactly yeah, maybe, maybe I triggered you. something by by just asking this question, but but to <laughs> see that that, and I do not want to sound some 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 kind of um, Western world snobbish, but to see that at every part of the world innovations on top notch level are possible. That is, mm -hmm. I think, what this is about. And if we if the forum can have a little little share on that and the extra boost to make it happen then all assets are worth it and i'm very grateful to be part of that okay wonderful um christoph Kraft, moving to you so i think we're uh, not going to have our next speaker uh, who would have presented a, a success story from mexico which is a shame but i think it's also four in the morning there so, <laughs> so maybe that was a bit of a reach but uh, christoph uh, you heard from ashwin about the ambassadors and the idea of pooling resources and pooling networks together uh, you are one of the ambassadors, and you've been listening in to uh, some of the things that we've we've been doing the last couple, two or three days. Your comments, your thoughts on on what's going on, anything that you'd like to add? Well, yes, absolutely. I I, I always thought that 
let's say venture capital investment on front, in frontier markets was really the uh, the poor parent uh, it was not interesting for anybody it was very challenging for the reasons i mentioned uh, earlier no access to capital weak legal uh, environment uh, no human resources uh, but it looks like it's the, the train the trend is changing a little bit and what was needed was really a kind of network of resources someone that could put all this together and at least you know start linking it and and probably share the best practices between them and 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 I think that's what's happening with the with this initiative and and I, I think it's great I think it's extremely challenging but that that fits well with with Excel and uh, and uh, I, I think it it makes a lot of sense okay great I'm glad that you're also that you're a part of it um, we'll basically I have one or two comments now about uh, perhaps what the three of you are doing. So I have you on this on the screen for another minute or two. Um, we've talked about some of these things yesterday. Um, Matis, you of course are in charge of an institute. You have uh, several people under you that you need to keep busy. What are some of the things that you see happening here in Switzerland that you think will be um, impacting us positively, hopefully, in the next two or three years? Ooh, things happening in Switzerland impacting <laughs> the world. Um, well, what I have seen is, and I don't know if, if it's a good or bad sign for universities, but uh, we have experienced a dramatic shift towards online teaching over the last month due to COVID-19. I mean, we had a timeline where we thought like in the next two years, we're gonna test balloon something mm -hmm. and to be honest, the Friday 13th, we had the lockdown and Saturday 14th, we had been online with a third of our courses and a week later we had been online with all courses. So um, even public <laughs> and government sector can evolve at rapid space, uh, speed if needed. So, so that was something to see. So I experience uh, education programs to become even more global, even more connected um with various payments methods behind it's uh, not like only branded universities charging a lot but also um education systems for teaching for equity or, or um consulting for equity or coaching for equity um that become more and more um things like we are asked for or where the education program is embedded into something like an accelerator so these are things i see forecoming um being a manager of a public institute having the branded money for time approach I don't know if it's only good news um, or I at least have a lot of homeworks to 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 reinvent uh, ourselves here and uh, from the students um, I see mixed developments uh, mm -hmm. some really get the message that um, corporates may provide security in secure times and their initial approach is also to seek this security in unsecured times, but not reflecting that these unsecured times may not help them. And they're rather reluctant in terms of engaging as entrepreneurs. Um, but there is a smaller but growing number that realizes that maybe these times are actually the, the times to start off their own because uh, um, there in terms of secure futures um they as we're looking for in corporates aren't so bright anymore so that's what i see so a lot okay. of changing in my industry and a lot of changing my sense uh, from students thank you thank you thank you very much Matas from switzerland um jonathan maybe one or two comments about what you see in south korea i know we mentioned this yesterday but perhaps for audience members who weren't around for that conference um, something that I could talk about is uh, Korea just had its first offline startup event, the first one since the pandemic started. So um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that yesterday, but I think that will be interesting to people. Um, you know, Korea was one of the first countries hit after it came from China. Uh, actually, it was the first country that it, it started being, you know, an actual pandemic. Um, so it kind of started early, uh, did really well with the testing. You've all probably heard about it on the news. Uh, Korea was famous for that uh, testing. Uh, the government's doing a good job throughout the whole thing of uh, tracking people, um, getting them free testing, 
even if they were, uh, you know, a, a, an illegal uh, foreign resident, for example, uh, they would allow them to get free testing and uh, even uh, hospital stays and things like that. Um, and now, you know, there was a time when it was almost eradicated about a month ago. Uh, there were only new cases of two or three per day. Mm -hmm. It's gone back up a little bit to about mm -hmm. 50 per day. Today was about 20 or 30. So it's still relatively doing very well compared to, say, uh, Western countries, you know, especially considered uh, comparing to the U.S. and, and, and places in Europe. Um, so this event went as scheduled yesterday. Um, I, I kind of wrote ab about it on LinkedIn uh, this morning. Um, and, um, you know, there was it was very lots of precautions put in place. You have to register in advance on your phone. Um, mm -hmm. They had temperature checks twice before getting into the building. Um, they gave you plastic gloves that you could take on and off. You had to wear a mask. That's not an option. You have to wear a mask at all mm -hmm. times. Everyone is social distancing of 1.5 meters from mm -hmm. each other. That includes all the seats at the stage. And when you're walking around, people are holding signs reminding you to stay 1.5 meters away from each other. Um, and of course, it wasn't as crowded as a normal event, but there were still hundreds, if not thousands of people there. So I think that was kind of a good success story mm -hmm. for, uh, okay. for how things might you know, work going forward uh, in other countries. So I think other, other organizations might want to look to that uh, if they're planning on having you know, an offline a networking event um, and I think Korea has been leading this for months uh, and so they continue okay. to do so and it's great. Thank you Jonathan for that also post-COVID perspective. Uh, I hear now that McCarthy is online so I'd like to thank you gentlemen um, Christoph, Matis and Jonathan for staying on and bridging the little gap there for our one speaker who didn't show up. I uh, hope that you enjoy the remaining few minutes of the conference today, and thank you very much for your participation and time. Thanks. Thank you.